it was dark. <laughs> you know, you just um, you thinking about nine and a half months down the drain because you don't win a championship. You get this close, it's time wasted. So you're sitting there, you know, you're down four with one of the best players going to the free throw line, like 28 seconds left, and you see them start bringing out the yellow cord. And you, you're seeing the San Antonio fans pop their shirts. You see, you hear behind you the bench celebrating because you've been in that moment before. You know how it feels. You know that celebration, and it just sucks. And then he misses one. Come on, see his money. I don't see no. I, I, don't, I don't see no other thing but winning. The journey for me, the journey is to this. The journey is to three. A third ring was so important to me because um, three symbolizes to me a lot that I believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. At that time, when I started winning three, it meant so much because my mom was um, in prison and I really needed um, to lean on my faith. And I picked number three um, for that reason. And it's just something that just followed me through life. It's crazy to even think about it. I've been in the finals four times. I mean, that's, I'm a kid from Robbins, Illinois, from 59th and Ferrari. I don't even supposed to be in the NBA, let alone going for my third NBA championship ring. So to me, it's, it's an out-of-body experience. After coming off of losing in 2010, you know, losing that championship, you know, and then that long summer with the lockout, you know, last year was just about making up for uh, our mistake the year before. You know, in a sense, it was about getting back to enjoying the game, but it was about, you know, revenge as well. And um, it was great to win that championship last year, you know, and I felt like that was more so for LeBron. Well, you know, just training to, you know, get ready for the playoffs. Obviously, it's, it's a different level um, than a regular season. Man, as you see today, I'm at Body and Soul. Night before the game, night before game, one of the finals decided to come in today, me and LJ, to get an extra session in of a little boxing, working on our combos. But uh, we came here to work out and to get that uh, intensity going, get that focus going, and, um, you know, for me to understand ourselves that, Listen, we got some more rounds to go, and um, we're not satisfied with where we're at right now. I need three! I need three! You got to turn it up a notch. You know, I, I gave more. I gave more. Um, but I had to make sure that my body was still intact. And I turned it up a notch. Yo, got a lot of good work in. Um, a lot of good core in. The biggest thing is just mental focus um, on what, what we need to do. And that's win four more games, and it's going to be hard. So today we started it. Tonight we started that process. And tomorrow, you know, the basketball begins. So great workout tonight. Road to a championship, man. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. My chef was, it was on me, making sure I eat the right things, um, make sure I had enough energy in, in the games. Um, I had to make sure I stay hydrated a lot. You know, I drink a lot, a lot of Gatorade. I have to make sure that, that I put back in, you know, everything that I put out. As much as I had to rub up on the court, I had to rub up away from the game too, uh, when it came to taking care of my body. I thought that this year had a lot of highs and lows, um, individually for me, when it comes to health, coming off of surgery, um, going through the bone bruises, going through the knees, problems in the, in the, in the playoffs. Here's a guy that's, actually literally in a lot of pain. There's a difference between being hurt and being injured. This guy was injured for two seasons. When I first started the season, I was coming off a knee surgery, so I knew that I wasn't gonna be at a, my full strength. We would go through exercises designed for him to help his muscles fire properly. 
to give his knee the stability that it needed. I knew it was going to take me to about January, February until I got to you know, where I needed to be. He started having different problems with, uh, with his left knee. January, February, I got where I needed to be. And I was, you know, I was balling. I was feeling healthy. I was, you know, I was the D-Wade that everybody came to, you know, to see on the basketball court. And then, you know, we hit this unbelievable streak where we just started winning you know, 10 games, 20 games. His whole game, Mr. Flash, is quick, fast, and explosive. And all those variables put a lot of pressure and force on the knee joint. And I, I get injured during the streak. I get these bone bruises I'm doing the streak. Here's a guy with a small tear in his knee going through this field of battle, game after game, performing, listening to all the crazy things that some fans and commentators and people like that are saying about this guy, not knowing the behind the scenes true story of what he's going through. But I don't want to stop because, you know, I want to make history. Um, and so I keep playing through it and then I get hit some more and I get hit some more to the point I get three bone bruises in one knee. And it kind of took a toll uh, on my body and it just never healed. Um, so I had to deal with that all the way through the playoffs. Um, it took game six where I got hit in my surgery knee <laughs> and it swole up. He felt himself starting to break down up to game six. That's when he gave me a call and asked me, yo dude, uh, I need you. And now I'm dealing with two bad knees, I guess, um, going into game seven. We had to do what it would take to maintain that leg strength throughout that whole series. And boy, was that some work. But what's interesting is here's a guy going to practice, playing games, and putting in that extra work. I don't care if it was 10 o'clock at night, he would call me over, meet me over here in the gym, bruh, come to the room, and let's get this work in. So, <clears throat> so you know, he's just a little rusty because his knees right now. He, but he's about to win a championship, so don't give him no slack. You know, when he win. Nagging injuries. And it's like I worked so hard, you know, to be healthy and to have those minor things happen that became so big, you know, it was frustrating. <laughs> Well, you know, your teammates get to see you and what you go through, you know, and I think, you know, when, when your teammates see you go through certain injuries and, you know, how much you're in the training room and how much you got to get, what you got to do to get prepared for a game, I mean, they're appreciative of you giving your, your maximum effort. You know, and for what he did tonight in the fourth quarter, um, being forgotten by everyone except us to come in with two-year-old steps and get a tip dunk and also get a key off his rebound and knock it off of Bulls to give us extra possession. That's what players do, so, um, but I really, I go on and on about how great he is. I really don't care for the trash talk that he receives. I think they said about me, you know, a lot of people like, oh, he, he ain't got it no more, he ain't this, he ain't that. I know I will, anybody who want to pick up a basketball and meet me at the gym, you can do that. But, you know, what I have to do for my team is different. It's a different game, it's a different Dwayne. And uh, it's not easy. Sometimes I want to yell and scream. Sometimes I want to shoot every shot. <laughs> Sometimes I want to be selfish. But it's not who I am inside. I'm not a selfish individual. And I do understand that I play a team sport. And it's about team success because at the end of the day, if I ever 40 points a game in this series and we lost, it will suck. If I ever, what I'm averaging now, we win the championship, I'm not going to care. No one cares. Uh, my teammates are great. You know, and that's why we're able to be successful. That's why we're able to come back in the game six the way we have, because we believe in each other. Um, and we're, we're such a close-knit group. Looks up from us. We got to go get it back tonight. From the beginning, all right? You know, we got this saying that I started saying, and I got it from um, the movie Red Tails. And I stand in the middle, and I say, nothing's difficult. And my team shot back. Everything's challenged. Do our first in it. To the last minute. To the last second. We fight. 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 Let's go! How do I balance my family um, with the pressures of the NBA, with the pressures of the world? Uh, been in the finals. I have no idea. So what I think about Dr. J is um, he's a very passionate player. <laughs> I love his dunk moves. You know. Um. I just like his game. If he get average, we talk to get average. Make it off the camera, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You know what? 
it's nothing to really show me how to do it. <laughs> you just gotta do what you feel is right. And me so? Dude, yo, what are you doing? What are y'all doing? All right, come on, get a finish. Go ahead. Right. Get on, My family understands the moment and the time, and they give me a certain amount of space, but they also need a certain amount of love. People was playing true for dare. <laughs> I mean, you was playing true for dare. You was playing true for dare. I got in it. I bet you did get it. What, what was your... What was your dare? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, That's all you, wanted. you don't want to know the truth. You want to know the dare. No. I used to hug a lot of people, a lot of girls. I did. did what? Hug. I, I had to hug a lot of girls. I dare you to hug her. With, with the bathing suit on. Like, like this. Uh, you wet, boy. I want them to give me too smushy either. <laughs> I need to be focused. I need to be tough. You didn't answer my text. You didn't answer my text. Yeah, right. You talked to my you. You sent me a picture of you and said swaggy. I what am I to answer? <laughs> it's a fine line. I think the family needs more credit than me. You know, with their sacrifice. You know, my kids' sacrifice is second to none. You know, when my lady's in town, she's not working. You know, her sacrifice is, you know, unbelievable. And Anything else you guys want to know about? <laughs> those, are, those are just my questions that I had going into uh, Game 7. Only way I'm able to make it work is because of the people I have around me, you know, is able to assist me. Now. I was like, you know what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, you trying to be a bottle. No, because I had it and then I gave it. He, he just wanted to do it for the camera. bottle. I had the bottle, I'm like, man, I'm trying to hold it. <laughs> and then every time I went to drink it, it was like overflowing in my mouth. Like, <laughs> Seasoned vet right now, but uh, it never gets old. I like this. I like doing this in the summer. I think we need to put this in on our summer schedule every year. That'll be good. I can't. I can't describe the feeling. You know, it's sur it's surreal from the standpoint of, of where I come from. You know, I'm I'm like every young boy. I had a dream. I know it's so many kids that I'm playing for. You know, I know it's so many people that I'm playing for. I just was the one that was lucky enough to make it. It hasn't been easy, but at the end of the day, we're winners. We want to be champions. I don't know what's next, but what's next is going to be special. I sleep in my head, take a shower in my head, do everything in his head. One head, way, one way. You wanna go night, night, night? <laughs> Speaking of you, Charles Barkley. <laughs> Sorry, Charles Barkley. All that trash from ESPN. Who's Charles Barkley? Anyway, he's a good girl. Okay, I'm You all good? Can I finish now? All right. Go on, take let, a let, let Mr. Junior go on to the rest of the thing. Bye-bye. Are you leaving? Now. Yes, sir.